Good morning. I am Dr. Antonio Tanchuling from Philippines. I'm going to present to you a new surgical technique in the fixation of comminuted patellar fractures. This is a report of two cases. The learning objective for these presentations, uh, this is the new surgical technique of fixation of comminuted patellar fracture. I'm going to discuss to you the incidence, the surgical technique, uh, which is the more popular one or the gold standard, and the current technique in fixation of comminuted patellar fractures, the results of which and the problems related to it. I'm going to uh, review also literature of methods of fixation in comminuted patellar fractures. And lastly, I'm going to present to you this new surgical technique, which I innovated. The mechanism and incidence, there are two mechanisms identified for patellar fractures. One is the transverse type, which is actually the indirect type of uh, injury. This is due to the rapid quadriceps contracture in the flexed knee. The second one, which is actually our interest for today, is the comminuted direct impact on the patella. Like for example, uh, dashboard injury in uh, motor vehicular accidents. What is the incidence of patellar fractures? For males, it has the highest incidence, especially among those aged 10 to 19 years old. The incidence is about 15.4% per 100,000 per year, or it contributes to about 1% of all fractures in the human body. What is the gold standard for uh, the treatment of these types of fracture? Literature will tell you that the most common procedure is called tension band wiring or anything, a modification of this technique. This is actually the uh, gold standard or the benchmark. Tension band wire using stainless steel or lug screws. This is the mainstay in the surgical management of comminuted patellar fractures too. But these implants are not suitable for such fracture pattern. It's so difficult to contain them and even come up with a stable fixation. Stainless steel wire with various configuration has been the mainstay of treatment. However, this is associated with so many problems or complications, such as what? Number one is loss of reduction for about 22%. Hardware migration, especially for comminuted patellar fractures, about 30%. But the most important of all, the dreaded complication of infection. The wire breakage is very common. It accounts for about 5% of all cases. You can see all these modifications uh, because there's no such thing as successful uh, operation. You can see that every unidentifiable fixation of objects are used in this patella, like for example, lug screws, mesh wires, or even plates. You can see them everywhere. So we came up with something which is probably a good option where you don't use any metallic implants or hardware. I'm going to show you later on. So we still look for new methods of fixation. These are the newer ones. The Himawari technique from Japan. Again, the mesh plate from the US and the one popularized by Artrex, which is, uh, this is available by, uh, by uh, commercially uh, by Artrex, and the patellar lock plate. So all of them are new, they are being tested, and I think soon they will come up with their own reports. However, uh, this prompted me to look for other means and other methods of fixation. So. I came across three literatures. I combined all the principles and I came up with my own. I call it the cobweb fixation. I would like to acknowledge the paper from China, the one made by Yang Yang, and then from Spain, the one made by uh, Camarda. He uses the fiber wire technique. This does not use any kind of implant or metallic hardware. And lastly, again, Andrew Wong, I think he's from Malaysia. He is the one who started using fiber wires to fix this comminuted patellar fractures. I got all the ideas and then I tried putting them together and I came up with this, I call it the cobweb fixation. 
So in, uh, we started using this in two cases. I'm going to present to you. Case one, this is TW, a 36-year-old male. He fell and landed on his left knee, having now a comminuted patellar fracture. This is the x-ray and this is the CT scan. This is the technique, actually. You can see that uh, uh, it starts with the uh, fixation of this. Yeah. We start with the use of tenaculum, and then you palpate the intraarticular surface of the patella. And then uh, next is after which you use a 2 0 fiber wire, uh, making this cobweb uh, uh, suture uh, fashion from the superior part. And then you continue doing this on the inferior part. You have to create such uh, design or fashion that it, it resembles the cobweb, uh, a spider cobweb. Again, uh, you have to put a retinacular suture to hold both uh, fiber wires on top of it. And then you try to uh, tighten it. And then here you see that the two uh, fiber wires are pulled to create a tensioning effect. Now you have to add a uh, figure of eight from both ends, superiorly from one lateral side. And then on the medial side, you should be able to create a stable construct. Then again, Lastly, you have to apply a circular, something like a circular uh, construct to be able to hold the fragments together. Okay. Then after which you have to try this and look on fluoroscopy to be able to uh, ascertain that every fragment is contained. So let's take a look at it again, just to share with you the technique. This is it, tenaculum, forceps. You have to reduce it, palpate intraarticularly, see to it that everything is reduced. Then you apply the 205 wire superiorly, and then you have to apply the inferior uh, fiber wire in a cobweb fashion. And then apply the uh, superior retinacular part. Then you have to tighten it by pulling it creating a tension, then create knots on both ends, to close it, and then you have to augment it with a figure of eight passing through the quadriceps on the patellar tendon and the uh, inferior part. And you have to put both sides, tighten it on the lateral as well as on the medial side. And lastly, you have to apply the circlunch wire it adds stability to the construct. It will hold the fragments together. So that's the technique. You know? Let's take a look at the cases that I have there. You know? This is the first case. Okay, after uh, fixation, I'm trying to uh, do some kind of range of motion uh, testing under fluoroscopic guidance. Okay, and this is how it looks like on the top view trying to flex it as much as possible, but you can note that everything is in place. Okay, this is the fluoroscopic appearance, how it looks like on fluoroscopy. Uh, this is very important because this will give you more or less an idea about the stability of the fragments that are uh, being held by the fiber wires. This is the case, as you can see, this is a comminuted uh, patella with a fixation and different motions in 30 degrees as well as 45 degrees. These are all intraoperative pictures. On post-op day two, I place the patient on a CPM machine up to 60 degrees, increments of 10 degrees per day. They usually stay for about two to three days. This is how it looks like. Now, this is the patient actively doing his own uh, exercise one week post-op on the bed, trying to achieve flexion as he tolerates it. And then he tries to walk using a pair of crutches this time, trying to be careful using the immobilizer. Let me go on. This is uh, post-op, uh, 
week three, again, trying to walk with crutches slowly, but faster this time. And you can see also the active extension and slowly trying to uh, extend it. So let's post up. Post up six week. You can see that the patient continues to walk this time faster. And of course, you can see that the active movement extension as well as flexion of the knee is better now. Let's go to case number two. This case number two is similar to the first one. 40 year old male, motorcycle accident, he landed on his right knee. Similarly, you can see that both, they have comminution of the patella. This is how it looks like intraoperatively. Uh, and this is uh, trying to test it after fixation. Not so perfect, but it seems that what is important is the articular surface of the patella, okay? This is uh, post-op day one. We start them on CPM, usually at 60 degrees. This is post-op uh, at two weeks. Actively patient can extend it almost, almost full extension with flexion of about 120 degrees. And subsequent x-ray shows you that there is already a good patellar consolidation. Again, post-op five weeks, you can see that the patient now starts to move freely and uh, both flexion and extension and patient is ambulating without any assistive device. And the recent X-ray now, you will see that there is a steel consolidation without disruption of the patellar fragments. Post-op, eight weeks, faster now, you can see that it's almost 120 degrees flexion, full extension, both in, yeah. Uh, patient shows you the extension as well as the flexion, and patient is walking faster without assistive device. Again, the X-ray will show you that it does not change at all on the eight week period while the patient is doing these exercises. It's stable. This is again on the 12th week, patient is showing you this time faster, more active and vigorously. You can see that the patient now walks faster and even can do squatting. So again, going to uh, show you, going back to this x-ray, it seems that the patella is well-contained and has not changed at all. Then on the 20th week, you can see that the patient is walking. This one patient is running. And this one, you can see that the patient starts to do lunges. And finally, you can see them doing squats. 20 week or five months, patient is almost, almost normal and basically back to his activities, okay? So in summary, I have presented to you comminuted patellar fracture. I discussed also the fixation methods and I talk about my new cobweb uh, fixation, which uh, uses fiber wire, doesn't use any metallic implants. I presented two cases. Of course, we're aiming for publication and reporting this for long-term follow-up. And we try to aim to gather more cases to validate this technique. Thank you so much. I would like to thank the organizing committee of the Malaysian Orthopedic Association and to my friend, David Chu. Thank you.